Okay, Mr. Rob's back at back at, at you. We're going to do some examples of our log graphs and some of the properties that our log graph showed us. Here are some of the properties that we got from the last video. I'll just put it here. I'll make it a little bit smaller. All right, so when we have this one here, let's take a look at this first property. And if I consider this, if I look at this scenario here, I have an exponent I have an exponential, the base is 5, raised to a log of a base 5 of 6x. Well, it's the, that means these two pieces here cancel out, and I'm left with just 6x is what this inverse property says. Similarly here, I know log of a base 9 of 9x power 3, x plus 3. Again, these are inverses, they cancel each other, so I end up with plus 3. If I go through the steps, Imagine I started at x plus 3, I raised it to the exponential, I 9 to the exponential of x plus 3, and then I undid it by doing a logarithm of base 9. These cancel, I left with what I will have started with. Same idea here, but oh, hold on. The base is missing. I know that there's a 10 here, but these bases are not the same. So let's make this the same. This is the same as 10 squared to the 3a. Well, using our properties of exponents, I know this is going to be 6a, and now these undo each other because they're inverses and I get 6a. Similar with this, I have a 3. It's convenient that this is a 9, so I have 3 squared log base 3, 7. Now I can't undo these yet because there's two log base 3 so I have to move the 2 using my properties I can move that up here now the log and the exponential cancel each other out and I'm left with 7 squared which we all know is 49 okay and so now we want to find the inverse function as given here well I know to find the inverse function I have to switch my x and y 3 times 2 to the y minus 1. And I have to solve for y. Well, let's bring the 1 over. It's equal to 3 times 2 to the y. I'm going to divide by 3. And so now I have 2 to the y is equal to x plus 1 to the 3. And at this point, conceptually, there's two ways I can do this. Right now, I've been working on the inverse idea, so if I want to lower the exponent, I lower it with a logarithm. I'm going to apply a logarithm to both sides of the equation, because one of the fundamental rules of algebra, if you do to one side of the equation, you must, 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 must do it to the other side of the equation. And so if I do that, I get this equation, and I know that there's an inverse here, so that becomes y is equal to log base 2x plus 1 over 3. Similarly, I could do a different conceptual approach. As opposed to applying logarithm to both sides, what I could do is I could change the form from logarithm from exponential to log form. And so that means my log to base 2, I keep the base the same of x plus 1 over 3 is equal to y. And so conceptually, this is a different procedure to go from here to here than going down the page, but they end up being the same equation. So either way is correct. Similarly, when I take a look at this one here, I know I'm going to switch my x and y. I get x is equal to log base 4, y plus 5. I want to get rid of the logarithm so I can get the y here. I'm going to raise it to an exponential. And when I raise this side to the exponential, these are inverses, they cancel, so it's y plus 5 is for the x. Subtract the 5, so 40x minus 5 is equal to 1. And that is the inverse function. I could have also at this point, as opposed to applying an exponential to both sides, I could have rewritten it as 4 to the x 
4 to the x is equal to y plus 5, and then y is equal to 4 to the x minus 5. So just a different conceptual approach, but both are equally valid. And then finally, solve using the inverse properties. So I have no choice. I must do it using the inverse properties to three decimal places. Well, if I want to solve this, I have an exponential. I have to undo the exponential by applying a log on the both sides. So I'm going to do a log of base 1.12, 1 1.12 to the x is equal to log 1.1215. These here cancel, so it's just x is equal to log 1.1215. If I want to check this, I plug it into my calculator. The so one side is 1.12 to the power x, the other side is 15, and I see that I get 23.896. So Desmo says x is 23.896. If I check my calculator, I'm going to go math, go to my log base. I'm going to 1.12 and 15. And I can see that that there is also the same value as Desmos got it. Either way works. Okay, so now solving this B part. So if I want to solve B now, well, I have a base 4 here. I have to use the inverse property because it told me I have to. So I'm going to take 4, 4, and put this in the exponent. If I do it to one side, I must do it to the other side. These are inverses, so they cancel. So x is equal to 4 to the 1.43. Using my calculator, and if I go 4 to the power 1.43, I can see my answer is 7.26. So x is equal to 7. Zero. It says the three decimal places, so that's what I did. Did I do that? Uh, this one I also did the three decimal places, so well, that is good. I should check this with Desmos. So, going to Desmos, I look at this, I go functions, and then there's a log here with a base symbol, and I'm going to make four, and this is x, and similarly, I'm going to go y equals, what was my value I needed? 1.43, and I can see my value is 7.26, which is what I got here. Okay, so using our tools to help us out, we can use logarithm graphs quite easily.